I just finished the main story quest for Halfion in Black Desert Online, and I've got to say, I really was pretty amazed by it, and and I'm I'm shocked to say it. The questing in BDO is pretty good, and is it perfect? No, it's not. Like there's elements of the game that are kind of glitchy. There's elements of the graphics that are not perfect. And yet, despite all of the things that aren't perfect about Black Desert Online, I have enjoyed my experience in the game. That's the bottom line. I'm sitting on probably around 30 hours in the game. And I know some of that time I spent AFK. Like I, I figured out how to get a fishing rod and fished while I was not at the computer for a little while. Um, let my character just hang out and catch fish. So yeah, a little bit of that time was AFK, but most of that time was spent just in the game, exploring the game world and questing one quest after another. And 400 little quests later, I finished the Calpheon storyline and reached level 51. And, you know, if I never played the game again, I would still say it was a pretty good experience. So, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy to have a game where you can fight all sorts of monsters you could do PvP, or you could be a fisherman, or you could hoard pets in a house. Like, there's so many different things I think you could do with this game. I just don't even, I don't even really have my head wrapped around what all those things are. So I kind of just, I look around and, and questing is obviously an easy thing to do because you just go to the next place and do the next thing. Um, but I know there's a lot more to the game, and, and I want to figure out what that is. I want to start to learn more about the game. And one thing, though, that I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk more about was this premise of a black spirit. Because, you know, who is this black spirit? that is sort of a major character in the game. And it's there to be your guide. It's there trying to convince you to become more powerful. It's there helping you to become more powerful. It starts off as just this little black puff of smoke that's sort of whispering in your ear. And then as you play, it grows more powerful and it morphs into something more like kind of like the Grim Reaper or something. Like it's just sort of this this creepy character and it's there. And, you know, I just being into the lore and the mythology of games, I, I can't help but take interest in this. And I'm also fascinated by the fact that it's not the first time we've seen a sort of a smoke monster kind of a creature in in gaming or in movies. Uh, if you ever watched the TV show Lost, there is this black smoke that had sort of a personality and a mind of its own and took a human form sometimes. And interestingly, the TV show Lost was also a show where you started off thinking you wanted to know, you know, what was the island about and what was, you know, what was the black smoke and what was it. You were looking for sort of a scientific kind of a rationale to explain the origin story there. But then the more you got into the lore and the more you experienced it, the more you potentially started to realize that the 
message that was being conveyed was more of a spiritual lesson and less of a sci-fi kind of a message. And what it really was about was finding peace. And and that was that was the message of that TV show. It was about people finding a way to kind of let go of their demons, to let go of their signature flaws, to find a place of harmony within. And yes, they were working through a lot of external challenges, but really what the TV show Lost was about in the end was the people. And that's what made the show fascinating because it was sort of a it was sort of a, a testing ground. They were stuck on this island, but it really was sort of a, a testing ground of character that they had to work through all of these things as kind of an exercise to uh, to maybe get to the place where they needed to be spiritually. Now in Black Desert Online, there's this black spirit and it's, it's, it's a guide, it's a tutorial helper, it's a game plot mechanism, but somewhere beyond that, there's a little bit more to it and I think what it really is it's symbolic of the pursuit of power and in life we we have to have power as we make our way through life we're always trying to find new ways to become more powerful and we should you start off pretty powerless as a child or you grow up and then you get a job and you know you're better off you're more affluent as an adult probably than you were when you were a child so finding power leveling up getting more strong that's not a bad thing that's a good thing it's part of how life works right but then there's this allure of power there's the corrupting influence of power and it's always whispering in our ear it's always trying to say you know you need to level up you need to you need to do more right and it's interesting how life is like that there's always that whispering voice saying you've got to uh you've got to be more than what you were before and it's a corrupting power so there's this paradox in life that you need power so that you can live you need power so that you can do good in the world. And so we have this rightful need to try to empower ourselves. And yet we also have a need to let go of that power, to not be corrupted by it to find a way to be in the world, but not of the world. And maybe it's a metaphor for being able to enjoy the journey instead of the destination. Maybe it's about finding a way to use the desire for power within reason and moderation while not being consumed by the lust for power. And that's probably the biggest spiritual lesson that life has to teach us. And we, we tend to want to look at the world through the lens of black and white, of good and evil. There's good guys, there's bad guys. And then the truth of the matter is 
it's seldom that simple because people do bad things driven by a desire to do good. People have reasons for all the different things that they do in life. And even the people who appear to be doing them for the right reasons usually have something that is sort of a, an evil side to them too. They have something that's corrupt, that's fueling their motivations, even if those seem like good things. Like for example, let's say that somebody is helping others, but deep down inside, the reason why they're helping other people is because they want recognition. They want glory for doing good. They want to be seen. So are they really doing good because of the right reasons? Or are they doing good because they're, they are they've agreed for being praised or being recognized? There's people who try to be good leaders, but are they trying to be good leaders because they truly care about making the world a better place? Or is it because they want the power that comes with making everything about them? You know, and we see these examples, so many examples in life where people are corrupted and, and they start off on this adventure, you know, low level adventurers just trying to make their way through the tutorial area. And then after a while, they get to the end game and they start to be more corrupt and they start to be more cynical and they start to be more interested in, I guess what you'd call the end game. Somebody said in my last video in the comments, they said, you know, Black Desert Online is a fun game, but once you get to the end game, it gets boring because you start to ask yourself, well, why are you grinding? You know, what's the point? And I totally get it. But isn't that an interesting allegory, though, of life? Because it's the exact, exact same thing in life. We have this feeling of, you know, you're trying to make your life better. You're trying to up your game and then you get to this point where you realize wait a second like what is the point what is the point of trying to level up be more powerful and have more money and have more status when you stop and you realize okay well wait a second i'm gonna i'm gonna die i'm gonna go back to the dust the then we realize, what is the point? Like, what's the point of grinding and trying so hard when it's all for nothing? And all of your, all of your power is going to reset to zero after a while. You know, you're, you're trying to, you're trying to build a permanent account on a temporary server. You know, that's how life is. But we always have that black spirit, so to speak. That familiar voice that's saying you have to chase something. You have to try to get power. And most people will be consumed by that at some point and they become corrupted. But some people, some, pe some people manage to not be so corrupted by the lust for power. And I think that's really the lesson. The lesson is just you've got to find peace in life. And you've got to understand that the key to not being corrupted along the way is to understand that life is not meant to be about reaching a destination.
It's meant to be about enjoying the journey. And then you're going to ask yourself, well, how do I be a good person? How do I be the right kind of adventurer, if you will? Well, maybe it's to understand that there is always this balance of darkness and light inside each of us. And you don't have to dispel the darkness. You just let it be a companion. And you are aware of the fact that it's a corrupting force that's always there inside of you. And you don't hate it. And you don't trust it. And you have that spirit that's never too sure that you're right. But you, you remain humble because you know that a lot of the things that can make your life better also have the ability to corrupt you along the way. And you start to understand that people have reasons for what they do and you become more forgiving of people. But you also become skeptical. You start to have a little bit more of a sense that, you know, I'm not going to necessarily trust when someone says that they're doing things for the right reasons. I'm not going to necessarily trust at face value that a person is going to do the right thing, you know? And I, I think that that's a, a really important thing, an important distinction to make because there's so many people, they want to be seen as a good person, you know? And if you say, well, I don't trust you completely. I trust you for the greater part, but I don't trust you 100%. You know, people don't like that. People want to say, yeah, but I'm a good person, right? But are you really? Are you really a good person? You're a good person when it serves you to be a good person. But is there a point where you might betray your values if it appeared to be in your best interest to do so? And I think for most people, the answer is yes. You know, as much as I would like to tell you that I'm a good person, is there a possibility that I could betray my values? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, to go back to Black Desert Online, because that's kind of what inspired this, um, Isabel is the, the leader of the uh, Merchant Guild. And, and she's, you know, she's a mercenary, basically. And she winds up, you know, at least for the initial storyline, she winds up being probably the most noble character, I would say, out of the initial bunch that you meet in the Calpheon storyline. And what's interesting about it is she's also the, the least likely character to really try to make a case for for being, you know, kind of a good person. Like, is, is she a good person? I don't know. She's not necessarily good or bad, but she seems to be more inclined to do the right thing just because she understands that doing the right thing is probably in her own best interest. And that leads me to this concept of rational, rational self-interest. I think that the best people you'll ever meet are usually people who aren't particularly interested in proving that they're good or bad. You know, they let you make your own determination of, of where they stand. And, you know, are they good? Are they bad? I don't know. They don't really try to prove that they're benevolent. They just are true to themselves and they put their own interests first, but they're pragmatic and they look at all angles and, and quite often they understand that doing the right thing for others is the right thing for themselves. So I think that's the best way to look at life. You know, don't necessarily try to be that, uh, you know, that knight in shining armor, just be yourself. and. Don't let greed be what guides you. Don't try to chase some kind of an end game. Just be, be you. And 
try to find a way to be at peace with your adventure as wherever you find yourself uh, you know those are, these are such good lessons such good lessons and i think it's interesting when i think about that mysterious black spirit that shows up in in bdo i think about how familiar that spirit feels because in real life doesn't it show up an awful lot? People chasing career progression. People trying to be devoted to some political party or their church or whatever it might be. You know, everyone's got something. They got their signature thing that they're obsessed with. And there's that kind of an evil glint in their eye. They're trying so hard, so hard to be better, stronger, relevant. And uh, in the end, though, we don't we don't keep any of it. And the people who want to hang on to power the most well, in the end, they they wind up paying for it with their soul. So, just enjoy the game, and don't uh, be too interested in chasing power for its own sake. I think that's the lesson to be to be learned there. Uh, anyways, I think. It's been a fun time leveling up in Black Desert Online. And, you know, is it the best game out there? I don't know. But it does feel like a game I want to keep playing. And, you know, 35 hours into the game, I still don't feel like I want to quit. Still feel like I want to do more. I want to learn more. I want to start to experience other aspects of it. Um, and, uh, you know, I also think it's crazy that, you know, 35 hours into the game, I still have not unlocked very much of the map at all. Just the three starting cities. And there's so much more of the map to unlock. So that's my plan. I want to uh, want to unlock more of the map and see what else there is to experience in the world. BDO. And look at that. There is a... It's a fox. Pretty, pretty cute fox. Interesting how the, the game struggles to uh, keep the camera in focus correctly. Anyway, it's a fennec fox there. And I gotta say also, while I'm on the topic of creatures, my goodness, horse animations are so, so good. Just... The way, the way horses act and walk and are animated, when I compare something like this to Elder Scrolls Online or any other game where you have mounts, like there's no comparison. Like just seeing a horse in BDO is really incredible. I, I'm sure it's it's not really on par with a game like Red Dead Redemption 2 or some of these other games uh, that are single-player RPGs that have good horse mechanics, but for an RPG, an online MMO RPG, you're not going to find better horse animations. I'll do, just just say that. Anyway, that that's about it for today. Talking about some philosophy and initial thoughts on the Calpheon quest line and BDO and you know I think I think my plan for the near future is to keep on playing the game and probably keep on making videos while I wander around this open world and start to get a feel for uh, for what what all there is to be discovered there anyways as always good luck on your adventure till next time thanks for watching <laughs>